This video is going to talk about three measures of central tendency. This is section 2.3 in your book. Measures of central tendency involve those words that you've heard since you were in elementary school and you've learned how to compute them since then. Um, and that's mean, median, and mode. We're just going to remind you of each. Uh, you can use any of these to refer to the word average. So when you're reading a news article and they say the average American, they might be talking about the mean, they might be talking about the median, or they might be talking about the mode. So we want to talk about mathematically the difference between them. For the mean, first of all, the mean is where you would add up your list of data. You would add your numbers together and divide by how many there are. That is the definition of mean. So in this example, I would take my calculator and I would add together all of those numbers. In this case, there are 10 of them, so I would divide by 10. That list added together gives you 42, and when you divide by 10, you get 4.2. So 4.2 is the mean of that list of data. Now let's go to median. I'm going to have to shrink this a little bit. Hopefully, um, if you are putting this in your notes, as always, this is a video. You have the power to pause so that you have time to copy down and then unpause, um, and you can rewind and repeat as necessary. So that's mean. I'm going to write mean next to that one. For median, you want the middle number. The number one key is make sure to order the data. That's the most common error that happens when students are computing median. So we have to put these numbers in numerical order. Um, so let's see, zero, one. And if you have repeat, like we have two threes in here, make sure you write both of them down in our list and continue through until you have all the numbers in the survey list included. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got them. Uh, always make sure you go back and check. Sometimes you think you're including them all and you might miss one. So I have them in order. In order to find the median, the median wants the middle one, just like the median of the highway is the middle part of the highway. In this case, I have an even number of um, data items. I have 10 numbers here, and so there is no middle one. So what you go is you do is go to the middle two. Three and four are my middle two. There are four numbers to the left of those two and four numbers to the right of those two. So these are my middle two, and I find the midpoint of my middle two. You already learned how to do midpoint. You did that when you were doing your frequency distributions. So I'm going to add three plus four and divide by two, or you can use the logic here, and 3.5 is the number in between them. So the median of my list is 3.5. Now, before we go to mode, I do want to add this. It's a little bit different when you have an odd number of data items. So if I were to take that same exact list, only let's say we add one more student, and that student happened to apply to 15 schools, or look at 15 schools. I don't know, overachiever, I guess, or, you know, who knows? So let's say we add an 11th student to this survey, and now I have 11 numbers. In this case, I do have one of my numbers is smack dab in the middle, and that would be the number 4, because there are 5 numbers to the left of it and 5 numbers to the right of it. So in that case, 4 would be my median. So you're either going to have one of your actual numbers as the median, or you will find the middle 2 and take the midpoint of the middle 2. That's median. The last measure of central tendency is mode. Mode is the one that occurs most often. And so the easiest way to remember that is most often starts with M-O, which are the first two letters in the word mode. So if I scroll back to my list of numbers, my original list of numbers, I want the one that occurs most often. Um, the only number that was repeated is the number three. So that happens to be my mode. In this case, 3 is the only thing that was repeated, so that occurred most often. So 3 is my mode. Mode is unique, and this is something you might want to put in your notes. Um, you can have more than one. And so it's not uncommon to have something that's bimodal, by bi meeting two. And so you might have two modes. If you have two numbers that are repeated the same amount of time, then you would list both of them as your modes, or three numbers. Or you can have no mode. You can't write and talk at the same time. So, if nothing is repeated, then there's no mode. 
or if every number is repeat, you know, if you if you just have a list and everybody said one as an answer, there would be no mode because nothing's repeated most often. There will always be a mean. There will always be a median. There will not always be a mode. So those are your three measures of central tendency. Um, you've seen them all before. You may just need to practice so that you can get them straight.